This time we will create a batch renamer script. We will start scripting right away by importing Unreal into our scope. This time we want to put everything into a separate method because we want to reuse it later in a further lesson about creating a GUI for exactly this script. As we've done before, we will create some instances of Unreal classes that will be used throughout this tutorial, and in this case it is the system library, and of course our editor utility library, which will be used to get the selected assets. In order to do correct and performant string operations, we will also use the string library of Unreal Engine. We could also use Python native tooling, but the string library gives us a very nice way to do this within Unreal. Our first operation again is to use the editor util to get the currently selected assets. We also want to persist the length of our asset list. And keep track of the amount of elements that have been replaced. As a last operation for now, let's just log out the amount of elements we have selected. After switching to Unreal and selecting a few elements, we can then call our script on those elements and check whether our output is correct. So here we can see we have four elements selected. In this next step we use a for each loop to iterate over each asset. For each asset we want to get the asset name. We're using the system lib here to get the object name as clear text and then log it out to the console. Re-executing our script in Unreal, we get the clear text name of each asset. This next step is the most crucial one for this tutorial. So we're going to check if the asset name contains the given string. The string library we imported before gives us a nice way to do a contains check. The method expects us to give it two parameters the asset name and the to be searched pattern. By also providing a third parameter use case, we can tell it whether to ignore the casing of our text or not. The search pattern is a variable we haven't declared yet, and this is one we want to get passed in from outside of our method. Before we implement this branch of the condition, we want to do the else branch. In here we want to do a simple logging statement telling the user that there was no match for the pattern. If our asset name contains the search pattern, we then want to create a new replaced name with our pattern replaced in our asset name. The string library provides us with a method called replace, which takes three parameters in our case. The asset name, the search pattern, and the replace pattern. Since the replace pattern also is a variable we haven't yet defined, we also want to put that into our arguments for the method so we can call it from outside. The editor util provides us with a nice method called rename asset, which can be used to simply and easily rename assets. We only have to provide it with two parameters, the asset itself and the new name for the asset. The last step to do is to increment our replace counter and put some appropriate logging in place. The final logging will tell our users how many elements have been replaced. Since our method now takes two parameters, we have to provide them through the method call. 
Switching to the Unreal Engine, we can now select our assets again and re-trigger our script. This time it should change the new material to old material. The logging tells us that for all the three selected assets, the replacement has been done. If we try to replace them again, we can see that zero of the three have been replaced. The last feature we want to add to our script is to have case sensitivity enabled or disabled depending on what we call our method with. So let's add a new variable use case to our parameters and pass it in from the outside. We also have to consider that the string replacement and the contains method calls are different elements. So we also have to provide another parameter to the replace method that will replace only based on case sensitivity. The documentation tells us that this search case element has to be of type search case. So let's create a new variable called search case and we will assign it unreal.searchCase and then it's an enumeration so we either have to do case sensitive if our use case is enabled or else if use case is false we will put unreal.ignoreCase as a search case element. The two enumerations case sensitive and ignore casing are important for the search case parameter that is also based on the parameter of use case we pass into our function. Going back to Unreal Engine, we can re-trigger our script and we still see the same result. However, if we switch back to our script and change the new word to a lower case and switch on the case sensitivity, we can switch back to our browser and try our script again. And this time we will see that zero of three assets have been replaced. This finalizes the batch rename script. As mentioned before, we will reuse this script later with a GUI.